Magic blooms. But the old ways serve us no longer. I take it. You've heard the rumors. Grindelwald had a vision that he would rise to dominance over the wizarding world. You portray a very different version of Dumbledore from what we've seen, but still him. him. Mm. So what would you say is the one thing he hasn't learned in this film? He hasn't? Yes. Forgiving, forgiving himself, mm. uh, mistakes made as a young man, as a very young man. You know, the sort of thing that perhaps we all have, where you look back and you regret something you maybe said to someone that you love or that you're dear, you're, that's dear to you that you know was really just uh, a sort of juvenile um, uh, uh, out, outburst. How does he manage to do that? Like, he, Dumbledore gets everyone to do whatever he wants. I know. Every well, single time. Well, I mean, look at him. He's suggesting <laughs> that it's probably the best, in the best interest, yeah. that they listen to that voice that uh, yeah. they know is telling them do to. Do you have any advice for me? I think go I to ask. Paris and lay your life on the line. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, any advice, any, well, no, but I think the other thing is that because Dumbledore's character is one of such an interesting mixture of being, like, having such stature and gravitas, but also warmth, like, and, and this kind of, and that's the goodness that people see in him, that, that they allow themselves to be guided, even if they know the guidance might take them a tricky, weird, roundabout route to do good things. You said a really interesting thing about Newt being an innately good person and doing the right thing. But sometimes what's interesting is that that's not enough. Sometimes you have to put yourself on the line. I think we live in a world where we're being demanded to do that now. It's like you, we, we can all talk about the right thing to do. We can all talk about you know making the right move, but sometimes you've got to put that out there. And this is a film, in a way Dumbledore's, I think, one of those people. He says, you know, I trust you, I believe in you. Now step up and yeah. make that count. So you're asking me to help hunt him down. I can't move against Grindelwald. It has to be you. In your shoes, I'd probably refuse to. It's late. Good evening, Newt. Oh, come on. This film is also about taking sides, which is a very important part of, of the whole, I guess, the whole five films we're gonna see. So I thought you might help people to kind of see which are the pros and the cons of Grindelwald. What he's offering is this utopia where wizards and, and uh, no matches could seemingly get along. And if wizards want to marry no matches, then, then that will, he'll create a world where that could be. And, and so it's very enticing. What, you know, but what he leaves out is that in order to get there, we're going to have to kill a hell of a lot of people, which, yeah. you know, starts to sound like fascism or something. He yeah. has no problem killing people. He has no, no. problem causing a war. It's, it's like very disposable to him, human beings, human life. Irrelevance is a key to our victory. Muggles are not lesser. Not this principle. So what was your first reaction when you found out how this film was connected to the Potter films? Because I think that was one of the main things us as fans wanted to know, right? Last night at the Hogwarts one, and I just turned, I just looked sideways, and there were, there was like a row of, like, adults, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And like French having, women having who a usually on the... keep it pretty cool, cool who were literally right? like, <laughs> like clutch, like like clutching different parts of, of their, their body. like clutching their face. Like I, the woman sitting next to me was clutching her own hand, like <laughs> in this state of like ecstatic bliss. And I was like, man, this is what it Are is. Are you sure all it wasn't about. me, the person who was sitting next to you yesterday? Yeah, it was, it wasn't Probably you. I know, it, was it was dark in there. Are yeah. you sure? I was like, uh, what? Are you sure it wasn't me? I'm not. I'm not sure. <laughs> You're too good, Newt. You never met a monster you couldn't love. Credence! I've heard 
that there was a controversy on set about who got to go to Hogwarts and who didn't get to go to Hogwarts. <laughs> yes. How would you describe that experience? How was it like, like the first day you got to shoot there? Yeah, no, it is. It's there. It's I mean, yeah, yeah, it is. You there. recognize the the hallway and the building, and yeah. um, it's it's incredible. And then they have the they have the students that are all in the in the uniforms with their owls and. And you're doing a scene with Dumbledore in the classroom. I mean, it's epic. It's owls, amazing. Like, right. it's, it is pure magic, isn't it? That's it what really it is. is. It's movie magic and it's actual magic. What was the one thing you bragged about going to Hogwarts that no one else got to experience? I just made stuff up just to annoy Ezra. I mean, just I mean, just <laughs> being there, I think, was enough. I don't think you have to say anything besides the fact that I was there and you were not. <laughs> Loser. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sir. Credence. <laughs> Mr. Scamander. Do you think Dumbledore will mourn for you?